of any kind always comes by hearing. You didn't believe you were dumb till you heard you were dumb. You didn't believe you couldn't learn till you heard somebody say you couldn't learn. Your unbelief is a result of something you heard about yourself. And the more you heard it and rehearsed it and even argued about it and said you didn't believe it, every time you face a challenge, tell me the truth. Don't those voices come back up? Every time you hit a low place, don't those voices come back up again? And you will never completely be healed or whole until you change the voice inside of your own head. And nobody can do this but you. You've got to make some conscious effort to begin to work to develop you. Start listening to tapes on a daily basis to begin to recondition your mind, to retrain your thinking. Listen to things that can empower you, that can enable you to create a new reality for yourself and a new life for yourself. You might appear to be strange around most people. Don't expect it to make sense to anybody why you've got to do this, why you have got to go. Well, I don't understand. You don't have to. I'm going for me. This is something I have got to do. How would an other person think? Write it down, dude, and fire and wire those thoughts in your brain. And install the hardware. Keep doing it with attention and intention. It becomes the new voice in your head. It becomes a software program. And before you reach for your cell phone and start scrolling through your social media, close your eyes and rehearse in your mind how that person would walk, how they would breathe, how they would smile, how they would greet people, how they would be on Zoom calls, how would they be in traffic, how would they be at dinner. And, and the act of closing your eyes and mentally rehearsing the act, if you're truly present, the brain does not know the difference between the real life experience and what you're imagining. In fact, just a little bit of time, you start to install the neurological hardware to look like you already did it. You must have faith. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in your abilities, your ideas, unquestionably. You've got some ideas, some dream that you might have to go back and brush it off and look at it again and say, I've got to do this. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is why I showed up. You've got to talk to yourself day in and day out, selling yourself on you and on your potentials. And all I want you to do every day is just say to yourself, when you feel that inner negative conversation saying you can't do it, just say it. It's possible. Other people have done it, then we can do it. We fail a lot of times. Well, a lot of other folks fail. And eventually they came back and they succeeded. So it's possible we can have what we want. And it's necessary. We get negative, do-nothing people out of our lives. It's necessary. We never stop learning and growing and developing ourselves. It's necessary that we never give up. Whatever we have to do, it's worth it. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. When you arise in the morning, think of what a privilege it is to be alive, to think, to enjoy, to love. The soul of a man harms itself, first and foremost, when it becomes, as far as it can, a separate growth, a sort of tumor on the universe. Because to resent anything that happens is to separate oneself in revolt from nature, which holds in collective embrace the particular natures of all other things. Yes, keep on degrading yourself, so. But soon your chance at dignity will be gone. Everyone gets one life. Yours is almost used up, and instead of treating yourself with respect, you have entrusted your own happiness to the souls of others. Everything of the body is a river. Everything of the soul is dream and vapor. Life is war and the abode of a stranger. The only fame after death is oblivion. Forget everything else. Keep hold of this alone and remember it. Each of us lives only now, this brief instant. The rest has been lived already or is impossible to see. The span we live is small small as the corner of the earth in which we live in. 
small as even the greatest renown, passed from mouth to mouth by short-lived stick figures, ignorant alike of themselves and those long dead. It's the programs in the first seven years of your life that actually started in the last trimester before you were born. The fetus is already learning. I go, these programs download in the first seven years control the character of your life. And I go, okay, what programs did you get? I go, well, wait a minute. What programs did you get before you were born? Your life is run by programs and you have no conscious awareness of these programs because your conscious mind wasn't working when the downloads were occurring. So all of a sudden I said, now we have a problem. I go, you've been programmed, you don't even know what the hell the programs are. 95% of your life is coming from the programs. Your life is a printout of your programs. Look at your life right now and recognize the things that you like that come into your life. They didn't get there by accident. They came in there because you have a program to, you know, have those things. The things that you wish or desire, but you have to work hard, sweat over, put effort into it. Why work it so hard? And the answer is, whatever program you downloaded doesn't support that. And you're trying to override the program with the conscious mind. And I go, well, here's the problem. The conscious mind only working 5%, the program 95%. That's one problem right there, mathematically, that's a problem. Let me give you another mathematical. The subconscious is one million times more powerful a computer than the conscious mind. So I say, now do the math. How effective is your conscious mind at overriding the subconscious? I say, it works 5% of the time with a miniature computer. And I go, now that's your problem. I go, the only way you can override the program is not play the program. And that's when we said stay mindful. And then we then said, well, that's going to be difficult because we have to think. So there's only one way out. Reprogram the subconscious mind. If you would put wishes and desire programs into the subconscious mind, that means that that program would be operating 95% of the day. Meaning, whether your conscious mind is in control saying these are my wishes and desires or the conscious mind's thinking then the subconscious mind comes in and says these are my wishes and desires then guess what then 100 percent of your life you're living wishes and desires and therefore all of a sudden then the work has to come back to each of us as individuals each of us got programmed each of us is manifesting that program we give up our power in many of the programs the fine example is you were sick as a kid, and just like your parents and any other family members, when you were sick, you went to the doctor. And I go, that's a habit. I said, what does it mean? It says, you learn this in the first seven years, the program. It says, when you're sick, you give up this power, and you go to that doctor, and you accept the doctor as the power of over you. Because when it came to health, it's like, no, no, you don't do it. The doctor does it. That's the program. I said, so what's the point? You have given up power over the control of your life and have given it to the truths, quote unquote, offered by the doctor. I go, significance, I go, the doctor misreads your diagnosis and then tells you, oh, I'm sorry, you only have three months left to live. And I go, significance, 95% of the day, the program says the doctor is the, you know, the correct one, the truth, what do I know? The doctor knows, what do I know? So 95% of the day, then your belief system is going to do what? Take the words of the doctor and manifest them as truth. I go, what's that mean? Well, you're gonna die in about three months. I go, from what? I go, hey, that was a misdiagnosis. <laughs> you're still gonna die. Because your belief system will manifest an illness that will terminate. The cancer, for example, is not due to any genes. There's no gene that causes cancer. The genes are correlated with cancer. What causes cancer? I say disharmony and repressed anger is one of the big ones. I go, so then I say, the genes didn't cause it? I say, no. So I said, then what caused it? I say, my consciousness. I say, what? Repressed anger? <laughs> you know? And I go, so what? I say, well, change consciousness. And guess what? You can go into remission. The cancer will go away as soon as you change the consciousness. <laughs> and all of a sudden it's like, I thought I was a victim of the genes. I said, that's a program. And that is totally incorrect. Because as quantum physics says, consciousness is creating our life experiences. And as the new biology, which I'm familiar with, called epigenetics, is how consciousness controls the genetics. 
and all of a sudden I say, oh, well then biology and quantum physics now share the same story. Yeah, you're creating this. And the idea is that if you look at the creation and you're not happy with it, don't go out and blame the creation because you never saw that you were participating in a way invisible to you that led to this expression. If you want to change it, you have to change you and then the environment.